Now, what would happen if I took off my glove? I think you should Can I try it. that? Do it. I'm gonna see just how docile these bees are by placing my hand gently down on top. And hopefully this thing doesn't happen. You just go ahead and lay your hand on When it comes to the buzzing world of bees, I am no stranger to these fuzzy insects. I've worn a beard of them, but that went horribly wrong, and I was stung 60 times in the face, neck, and arms. Ouch. I've carefully borrowed a slab of honeycomb from a wild Africanized swarm to determine if killer bee honey is better than regular honey. And I even showed you how to properly take care of a bee sting in the event that you accidentally find yourself at the receiving end of one's barbed stinger. Today I am back in Tucson, Arizona, and I will once again be working alongside bee expert and honey master, Chris Brinton. Not only has Chris been a friend of mine for many years, but he has also helped us in the creation of every bee episode produced on the Brave Wilderness Channel. Given the list above, you are probably thinking, what else could we possibly learn about bees? Well, have you ever wondered what's inside of a bee box? Beside the bees? Today we're going to show you exactly what's in these white squares and how they work. Chris, I'm excited, but I have to say I'm a little intimidated at the same time. We are surrounded by boxes that are filled with bees. We have isolated a single box to look inside. What you guys probably don't realize right now is that there are bees flying all around us. How chaotic is it going to get when we open up this box? Oh, it's going to get chaotic just because we're opening up their home. We're okay. taking the roof off. Right. I mean, if you get your roof ripped off, I wouldn't be happy about it. Anything's possible. You're probably going to be a little angry, too. I would be a little angry. However, these bees here have been remodified, I guess you can say, by requeening them to a more docile European honeybee. Okay. So they could be a really nice honeybee. Well, I have a feeling that everybody assumes they're going to be buzzing all over us. Things are going to get noisy. I'm ready to get inside. I've got a list of burning questions that I know the Coyote Pack wants answers to. So let's crack the top and get inside here. So, oh, you just, oh, wow, okay. Holy mackerel, that is a lot of bees. Oh, and all on the lid too. Yeah, this is what happens when they start running out of room when honey season's coming in. Wow. This is what we call burr comb. This is when they start actually running out of space down here. This means they actually need another box. Okay. But yeah, actually to tell you the truth, what a very nice colony of bees. That is what you would call a full house for sure. Now, I noticed that there are these different slats that line the inside of the box. Are these where they're actually building the comb? So these are what we call frames. Okay. This is where the bees do their work. Okay. So they draw comb, which is wax, which is basically honey. Then they will make cells for either A, honey, B, pollen, C, babies. And what she'll do is they'll, they'll basically contain their middle of their nest. They're, all their brood's gonna be in down in here. Okay, all this the babies where, are tucked that's down where, into there. That's where mama's doing most of her work right there. Okay, let's be quiet for just a second. I wanna see if we can pick this up on the microphone. That is loud. Bees are buzzing. So if I've done my research correctly, inside is basically made up of three different bee types. Drones, workers, and a single queen. And what most people don't realize is that the majority of the bees inside of a box are actually female. All of the workers are females and they can't actually reproduce. It's only the queen that can reproduce with the drones. Am I correct in saying that? Absolutely, they have different stages inside of the hive. When they emerge, they're a nurse bee. They graduate from a nurse bee to a guard bee. Mm -hmm. Are and those the they, ones up front? Yep, these are the ones that kind of protect the front of the entrance. Uh -huh. And then from a guard bee, they turn into a forager. So we've lifted off the roof of the bee box at this point. Let's pull out one of these cells and see exactly what is waiting for us inside of the box. Can we do that? Let's go ahead and take this lid and we'll set this in the front out here. So that way, if they feel that they want to march back into their home, they can do that. Okay, so that's the first cell right there. And so, wow, look, they're just staying right on the comb. This is the beauty about working with European honeybees. When we change these over from an Africanized nest, uh -huh. We turn it into this. This is workable. This is something that we can literally take to farmers' fields and pollinate crops with. 
And the best part about it is when you can move your hand and you can place your hands on them and they don't try to sting you, this makes beekeeping so enjoyable. Now, what would happen if I took off my glove and laid it on top of the bees like that? Do you think I'd get stung? I bet you you wouldn't, as long mm. as you don't really push on. I think, I think you should can I try it. that? Do it. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna see just how docile these bees are by placing my hand gently down on top of them. And hopefully a sting doesn't happen. Just go ahead and lay your hand on them. Whoa, that's a crazy feeling. They're all vibrating. It's actually really warm. It is. Honeybees keep nests at 92 to 95 degrees. So, no stings. No stings. So, can we find the queen? So, if you look on the top, mm -hmm. you'll see a lot of young nurse bees. Their nurse job is to take care of things that she just laid or hatching eggs. Can we take a look and let's, see if we can find her? Let's see if we can find this queen. So, what we'll do is we'll pull these frames back. Mm -hmm. And then what we'll do is we'll actually take this frame and we'll go straight up with it. Okay. Nice and leaving a lot of room. Oh, look at all those bees. So what we're gonna do is the first thing I do is I always look right where I pull it up and I look for her, okay? Yep. And then I'll flip that over and I'll look on the back side here. And you're gonna look for a bee that is twice the size of a standard worker bee. So let me ask this question real quick since this is so cool to be able to see this. These cells, what's inside of here? Honey, or are those larvae that are behind each one of these this caps? This is all larvae. Larva. These are all eggs that have turned into young baby bees. And you can see like that just emerged right there. Yeah. That right there is what these little tiny fuzzy bees are. She just hatched out of her cell. Baby bees, baby very cute. Baby bees. Okay, so no queen on that frame. How many bees would you guess are inside of this box? You know, it's a really hard guess. I mean, a lot of times people over speculate, but I'm gonna say it's probably around 25,000. Wow, 25,000 bees possibly inside of this colony. Okay, so now we've got another frame up here and you can see this one is full of food here too, because this is yep. all pollen. Being the fact that we're not seeing any eggs, we're not really close to where she's at. Oh, okay, so, so more eggs. These are cells that have hatched out, so less actual active eggs versus more babies that are emerging. See how okay. there's all capped over? Oh yeah. So this right here, when, when you move these bees out of the way, and what I, you can just touch them because they're social insects, so you don't have to worry about them trying to sting you. They like to be touched because they touch each other all day. Yeah. But you can see all that, that's all brood that's gonna emerge. Wow. And that's all brand new babies that are gonna fill this box even more if we that's don't give them more space. Crazy. So we come to the other side. And we're still looking because we still don't see any eggs. Where is the queen? So far we are 0 for 3, but she has to be in here. She has to be in here because there's babies all over. All right, here we go. Is this the frame with the queen? Nope. This is probably not going to be. A lot of honey. All honey. But you know what that might mean? Does that might mean you need to try that. Can I try that honey? I think you should try that. OK. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And I'm gonna get you a big old glob of honey Whoa, right there. Oh, are you kidding me? Now unzip your veil. Really? And yeah, that means they didn't sting you. I guess that's true. There's a few that are out here, but I mean, if you go straight up underneath your veil, you should be able to eat that. Wow, this is cool. All right, I'm gonna try honey right out of the hive. Yeah. This might get a little sticky. Don't get honey on my mic. Wow. Holy delicious. Isn't that amazing? That is unbelievable. Let's this might be better than the killer bee honey that I had that one time. Whoa. It's like almost making my eyes water so sweet. Wow. That is incredibly rich with flavor. That is unlike any honey I have ever tasted before. You want to talk about an energy rush? That's it right there. Woo! Ultimate energy rush. Man, that is good. You get a little bit of wax in there, into your teeth, chew it up. As natural as you can get it right there. That was cool. Wow, thank you, Chris. I did not expect to be eating some honey literally right out of the hive today. Okay, well, we're still looking for the queen. We gotta go back in here and go to the other side. We're, we're going backwards now. And remember, we are looking for a bee that is twice the size of the other bees, so she should stand out pretty obviously. Ooh, ooh, Chris, is that her? That's her right there. Wow. 
Let's go ahead and grab her. Okay. Like that, that is the queen. Look how short those little wings are. Now here's the ultimate question. Can a queen sting? She can sting other queens. Okay, so she wouldn't be able to sting me. Not that I want to get stung by her, but she is capable of stinging other queens. Now is that for the defense of the colony? That is for her taking over the colony, or let's just say she's a virgin, she hatches out first and there's other ones that could possibly take the nest over. She's gonna go ahead and get rid of that competition. She's gonna be. I see. The queen is a big bee. Well, it took a little bit of effort, but we finally found the queen. And now we know the answer. Yes, the queen can sting, but she can only sting other queens. All right, Chris, well, I feel very honored to be in the presence of the queen. You got to meet the queen. Wow, and there she goes, disappeared right back down into the hive. Well, I'd say we learned quite a bit today, exactly what's inside of a bee box. I got to try honey straight out of the hive and even got to meet the queen. That was fantastic. Chris, thank you so much for this education in bee boxes. You're welcome, Coyote. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. The hive structure of honeybees is a highly functional world that at a first glance seems simple. But what you don't realize is that honeybees are an intricate part of our planet. Every year, millions upon millions of bees are required for the pollination of plants, many of which become the foods that we are so accustomed to enjoying. I encourage you to do a little more research on your own. Bees are fascinating, and who knows, maybe one day, you will become your very own backyard honey farmer. And if you're a huge fan of Brave Wilderness, check out our merchandise at shopbravewilderness.com. You'll find everything from t-shirts, to hoodies, to backpacks, and even my authentic Coyote Peterson hat.